I knew that this, unlike a lot of the disasters that we see all over the country and all over the world, in fact, uh, this was going to be a mass casualty event. A town of a little over 170 people, uh, the town is gone. There's nothing left. There's no infrastructure. The mud slides go from a foot deep to better than 75 feet deep. The mountain, if you will, that was here was gone and now it was back here. And so all of that, you know, tons and tons, thousands of tons probably of dirt had come and just complete devastation. Those families of those people may never get closure. I did talk to one lady. She'd been sitting watching TV and in within 60 seconds, everything was gone and only she and her father are left. Her take on the whole thing was she would she would give her own life if they could come back. There was a, an older woman who had lost all of her family uh, in her home, of course. And, uh, the same, the same question: Why, why am I still still here? And my family, my neighbors, they're gone. That those are. Those are things that uh, it just it just tears you up. This little boy was found. I think it was the third or fourth day. Uh, he was actually stuck in the mud. They found him. They pulled him, dug him out, and pulled him out of the mud and then they took him down to the Oso fire station. Our disaster mental health worker, who was my roommate, just happened to be there, and uh, they were reunited. It, my roommate was telling what a beautiful story it was, how excited they all were, and then as the family was going about the business of whatever they needed to do at that point. Uh, Bob was there playing with him and they were throwing a ball back and forth. And I will tell you, he came back after seeing all this tragic stuff. He came back that night just completely elated and showed me pictures of him playing with that little boy. And of course I'd seen it on the news about the recovery, but I didn't know that my roommate was involved. But it was, it was a real upper for, for all of us. Our disaster mental health workers from the Red Cross and the health services workers that went up there and were working with the families and with the rescue workers, I would deem them heroes. Again, I feel so truly blessed to be part of this organization and to be able to go out and work side by side with some of these people. Our chapter exec sent me a poem which had been sent to her from this woman in Idaho. Well, Jamie, our job director, she, she read that. She says, do you think she'd mind if I read it? And I says, I think, I think she'd be honored. We, we have a, a morning meeting every morning at 8 o'clock. She read that poem. I don't think out of about 75 people that there were any dry eyes. And there were a lot of people hugging and remembering, this is why we're here. It was a, such a beautiful poem.
a tragedy. Broken hearts and sadness rules the day. A tragic mudslide swept a town away. Families will no longer share special meals or time of play. Some are left, some have gone away. We will always wonder why, because God loved each and every one. Heroes went into action to find the ones who lay beneath the clay, never giving up from day to day. Mother Nature is unkind in so many ways. God who made the universe will comfort when we pray. He will walk with us through each trying day. Claim his love. He will bless you with hope and comfort. It is his way. <laughs>